Hey YouTube, Untamed here. Uh, today's video is going to be a bit different, obviously, than what you're used to seeing from me. Uh, however, I think some of you will, will appreciate seeing this. So, if you recall, maybe three, three weeks ago now, two or three weeks ago now, I ended up purchasing this AJT Design Key Fob, right? So, I was seeing the Army Green, and I got this for the Tundra. I figured I would at least try it out. Because um, as many of you are aware, the stock standard uh, key fob is pretty much garbage. I'll show you right here. So we have this is your your standard fob, which is the most chintzy, plasticky, cheap piece I've ever seen. So especially when you're when you're buying such a nice vehicle, you're buying a fifty thousand dollar, fifty five thousand dollar truck. Uh, I don't know. It is. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. You're, you're getting this awesome rig and then they hand you over this uh, on your way out the door. It just doesn't really match up too well. Now, some of you kind of poked fun in my in the video that I highlighted that component saying like, hey, you shouldn't be worrying about the key fob. You should be worrying about the truck. And I totally agree. Uh, however, there is a level of, uh, I don't know, there, it, there should be some kind of reciprocation here between the two. So... That is why I end up getting this guy. And really, since I've had this one, I've already gotten quite a bit of compliments on it. Yeah, going to work, just, you know, what do you do? You throw your key fob, you throw your keys on your desk and kind of forget about it half the time. But, you know, just people come into my office are like, well, that's pretty cool. I've never seen a key fob look like that before, and uh, they tend to like it. So I'm definitely impressed with it. And as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, originally I ordered the wrong one by accident. So I ordered the wrong one, I had to reach out to the company, I was like, hey, I'm sorry, I got the wrong one. But like, dude, no problem. And they end up just saying, hey, send it right back and then we'll get you another one here in a day. So it was just within a couple of days I had the right one. Uh, so definitely hats off to the company, super nice guys. I think I worked with Adam, he's uh, the owner slash manager, um, and another gentleman there. They're both extremely nice and professional. So that's why, another reason why I'm shooting this video for you guys, um, because I was so impressed with them. Since then, obviously, I, because I liked it, I ended up getting one for the Forerunner. Uh, for the sake of not being totally confused when we reach our hand into our uh, key bin uh, to know which vehicle we're actually getting, we purposely got black for our Forerunner. So we got black fobs for the Forerunner, and then, of course, uh, green for the Tundra. So what I'm going to show you guys today, though, is I'm going to highlight the, the version 2, if you will. So this is the version 2. Uh, key fob that they offer and right at first glance you may have already noticed it already obviously it looks different but it does not have the uh, the key insert right so the emergency key insert is on this one as you see whereas this one is just a a hole for the for, for a key ring so again so this is the black one this is our backup this is our backup uh, Forerunner key fob that we have now and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to pop on and just you know remove your old one remove the components the internals from your old one and pop it over to uh, the version 2 here and it really it is nearly identical the process for the version 2 versus uh, the version 1 if you will that I have over here uh, super simple so I figured I'd share that with you so here is the original We'll start by popping or pressing this button here and pulling out the key. So you press the button, see if we can do it easy. Oh, there we go. So press the side button, pull out the key. We'll put the key over here. We won't be needing that anymore with this, this new one. Um, actually, excuse me. Yeah, we do need it. So we're going to use it as a screwdriver here, if you will. Um, and just it's real simple, doesn't take a whole lot of effort. You're just inserting it into that little slit here on the side. I think I'm trying to get you guys a good look at it. So just pop it in there and do a small rotation and it should crack open for you. It's just like that, pretty simple. You know, open it up. One side will have the motherboard, if you will, the electronic component of the internals. As you can see there you got uh, the two white buttons and two and the one down below spaced out further. The one down below with the larger gap in between is the panic button and the two closer 
or the lock and unlock, the top one being lock. All right, and on the other side, you'll see the actual battery for the fob. So it might be useful to some of you watching this. Um, if you ever just need to change your battery, you, know, you pop it open just like that and swap this out pretty easy. So this is a Panasonic CR2032 3V for anyone interested. So we'll put that right here for now. We'll throw this piece of the old fob over here. We won't be needing that, nor will we be needing the key, of course. Here is the other side. So it has this little like rubber grommet uh, separating uh, between the buttons, the buttons and the inside of it. So a simple way to do it is just kind of push one of the buttons and it pops up the whole thing and you can peel out the, the grommet there. All right, and then you can just pretty much just flop it over and then all the buttons should pop out like that. So we'll throw that over here. We won't be needing that anymore. Um, previously, like with this version fob, you did use, we did use the uh, previous um, buttons, whereas with the version two, as you see here, you know, it comes with, comes with different buttons. So we can put these to the side for now, the old buttons. With the version two, uh, I, I got both red and black button options within the package I got. So for the sake of still matching up with the theme of the originals here, uh, I will still have the panic button be red, similar to what we did with, with this guy here. So we're essentially just matching up with what we got going on here. All right. All right, so we will just take out the red panic button. And that is that one. So put the other two up here. And then both the lock and unlock uh, black buttons and we'll remove the, the black panic button. Okay, so the ones we're actually using are right here. Alrighty, we'll start by doing that too. So, like I mentioned before, the, the two closer buttons right here, so the two close ones, that's your lock and unlock, and then the bottom one here, the further distance apart is your panic button. So we'll start throwing in the actual buttons We'll start with the lock button up top, make sure it's reading the right way. This one's pretty hard to mess up just because all of the shapes within here, you know, they align uh, appropriately with the button, so you can't really mess it up too well. Watch now that I say that, I'll mess it up. All right, so this is the unlock button, throw that in, then the panic button down below. Again, you're just matching it up with the, with the shape. Simple enough. Alright, and just kind of keep in mind this is the bottom of it with the, the, the opening for the key ring there. We'll grab the other side now, again, making the key ring opening the bottom. And if you can see it, there is a circle area here. If you can see it alright, this is a little circle right here with little indents. That is where your battery is going to go. So we have the little motherboard here, electronic piece. We'll put the battery face down right there. So it should just kind of fall in, right? At this point, we'll I'll just grab the grommet. It's for the other side where the buttons are at. I'll grab the grommet. And if you can see, I'm trying to give you guys a good look at this. The two thicker rectangles, so this these are the thicker two rectangles up here. Those are gonna go behind the lock and unlock buttons, whereas the two less thick buttons down here, the rectangles, are going to go down below with the, with the panic button. All right, so we'll just lay it in. You're not going to have to force it in or anything. Just lay it in there. Should just kind of fall into place for the most part. All right. That should be good. So you just pop it in there. It should just lay in there. Okay. So at this point, I, I'm sure you could do this probably one of like five ways, but what I've noticed works fine is you take the top piece while you're holding the motherboard component and the back of it, and you're just laying it on top of, on top of the other half here. So lay it on the best you can. All right. And you just hold it together. So at this point, I'm just kind of pinching them t together, right? 
double check, make sure we got all the buttons right the right way. They all look good. Uh, now we'll just start the, the screw piece. And I won't insult your intelligence here. You got four little screws. Uh, this particular kit had black screws. And like you saw with the other options there, you can get different colors, different variations, which is pretty cool. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Um, I think it shouldn't really take you any, any longer than 15 minutes for your first time as you're just kind of tinkering through it. Um, then after that, if you get any more, it'll only take you about five minutes to really knock it out. Wrap up here. All right, and we're down to the last one. So we're purposely making these ones our or backup keys, if you will, for each of the vehicles, the version twos, uh, just because it doesn't have the, the emergency key slit. But I mean, you're in all actuality, you're probably not going to ever need that. So, alrighty. So there you have it. Hopefully, it can kind of come through pretty clear for you. So lock up top, remember, then unlock, then panic on bottom. Super simple. There's the back side of it. I'm definitely impressed with the product and I, I guess more importantly I'm impressed with the company so that's the reason why I'm shooting this video for you guys I want to share you with you how simple it is um, and of course you know if, if you do have a Toyota I encourage you to maybe check out them AJT designs I'll, I'll post a link to their to their site of course in my description and you guys just let me know if you have any have any questions in particular we'll wrap it up we'll by throwing on our little tag here This is where I accidentally hit the panic button and wake up my daughter. That's, that's how that's going to work. Okay, got it. Alrighty. So there you have it. Got all four. I think they're definitely a nice touch. So as I wrap up this video, I was debating if I just wanted to at least tease it to you, but I think I will. So I have... A few other things I'm going to install. Uh, these are going to be all beyond the Tundra. The first one is this black shift gate, uh, or I guess shift gate surround. So within the, you know, right around your actual shifter where you're going park reverse and all that, this is, right now there's a chrome one of these in the Tundra that comes stock, in, I think in all Tundras, and of course the TRD Pro that I have. So this is, I think it's important for me to note, this is like a, a prototype, if you will that AJT Designs is like just kind of wrapping up, but they kind of offered it up saying, hey, if you want to you want to check it out, you're more than welcome to. So I said, heck yeah. So I'm going to be throwing that on the rig, hopefully within the next few days here. And of course, I will show you guys that. Um, also, I have two other center console components. So this is for the Tundra as well, just a black center console surround rather than, you know, we're talking, you know, your cups go in here. Um, apparently it's a pretty easy install. I haven't looked into it too much yet, uh, but I think it's just gonna look a lot better and bring it all together much better. Cause right now, if you guys recall, if you're familiar, they have the, like a silver-ish color surround right there. And I think they're a little bit more susceptible to scratching and all that stuff. Whereas this is just, you know, a nice, nice quality black finish. And then the final one is, you know, right around that same section too is this goes fully around uh, the shift, uh, your, your shift knob there. So again, to match the, the Forerunner one here, so like these guys, see we have the red, red screws. We did the same thing uh, with this guy here. Let me see if I have it over here still. I think I might have put them down here. I misplaced them. So they are the red screws. Um, I think that should look pretty nice. And, and if you recall, that it does have TRD Pro stamped on the center console as well. Uh, so I think it should match up pretty pretty nicely. So anyways, more to follow on that. I figured I'd at least show it to you. But in the meantime, feel free to shoot me a note if you happen to have any questions about these guys here, okay? As always, I appreciate you watching. Until next time, all right? Bye.